I split, of course, things went different way. From the board of ed, I started working for the Department of Youth and Community Development. So I've been mm -hmm. serving people for over 50 some odd years. Wow. So what happened when I came down, I was told to come down and pick up a package. Mm -hmm. And I came down to pick up a package to do the census and so forth, so on. And when I came down, I, I see Ms. Blackwell here and of course my friend Rodney Askins. And I looked and I seen what they were doing. I said, you know what? I'm tired of sitting in the house. They saying that be careful, be all this, be all that. I said, mm. but come out and help and serve the people. This is something I did 50 years, 51 years ago. And I wow. just started coming out because I wanted to do what I know how to do the best. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Especially be my people here in Harlem. Wow, that's a, that's that, that's a beautiful thing. So, so what has been the response? I'm sure the people are greatly appreciative. What what kind of response have you got from the community? Oh, you know the people are so. You know, to be honest with you, they they really they're really glad that we're caring for them, because you know you look at the homelessness <laughs> that we have out here and how this COVID thing has really increased more homelessness. These people are glad mm -hmm. to get sandwiches or a hot meal. And Ms. Blackwell goes even farther. We have a little microwave that we had. It just blew out, <laughs> it just blew out on us yesterday. Mm -hmm. well, so many food in two days. After a while, the microwave just gave up. So if anybody mm, didn't want to wow. send the microwave to us, We'd be grateful to really appreciate this microwave, but we wanted to give the people something hot. They can eat it right there if they wanna, mm. or they at home, and especially the homeless. They have no place to heat this food up. So they're getting this food mm. hot. They're getting a fork, they're getting a napkin, they get water, they get milk, whatever they want with it. And they are grateful that they that they have this food. And it's good to see them because they feel good. And they come by and say, thank you. They're so grateful and, and not just, African American, Latino American, we have Asian Americans come and eat this food in our community. So mm -hmm. we we used to what I used to do 51 years ago, feed the people, serve mm -hmm. the people, mm -hmm. give them to the people. Wow. So 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 now I know where you are, but tell us about where you're located and how people can find you and, and get to you. Okay, we're here between 43rd and 44th Street. 140, well, I forget, I'm in Harlem. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm giving up Harlem, that Harlem yeah, yeah. Let me Let me add that one to it. I'm yeah. between 142nd and 143rd, 144th, and Malcolm X Boulevard or Lenox Avenue, mm -hmm. right across from the park. Mm -hmm. And how you tell us, very mal distinct, we had two little blue doors that opened at the Fred Samuels Center. When you see it, you see two little blue doors. And you could, and there we are. Mm -hmm. Wow. So you know, you, how long you been working with with, with Miss Blackwell? I, I know I've known her for a few years. She is an incredible community activist and, and leader. I mean, what's it like working with her? Okay, I'll tell you. I met Miss Blackwell when I community development. She knows me from there. Mm -hmm. I was a monitor for a program she had. So she met me and she came down to DYCD and see what I was doing. And she realized that she, when she see me, she said, oh, Cyril, I, and we met each other then, you know, at Harlem. Mm -hmm. um, because Harlem was one of my bases for uh, monitoring programs. I had a lot of programs here in Harlem that I monitored. Um, then when I met Ms. Back as I'm out, I'm doing that, I'm retired now. That's been years now I'm retired now. I've been probably retired since 2013, 2012, 2013. Uh, you know, like I'm in my community, no matter what I'm doing. I'm a volunteer at the Schomburg Center. I do mm -hmm. um, documentary for senior citizens up at the um, housing on 140th Street. So I'm just in my community. Like I said, I'm a community activist. It's, mm -hmm. it's in but it's in it's what I do. Mm -hmm. So once I know I'm giving something back to the community, that's how I feel. I'm doing something. I mean, I, they tell you to be careful. They tell you to do this, but you know who's going to do it? If we everybody run from this, who's going to do it? There's people is less fortunate than I, and who's going to serve them if, if you know somebody don't come out? So I figure like this: 
if it was if it was ordained for me to leave this planet, then now I've been gone. But right now, I'm doing what I believe the good Lord wants mm -hmm. me to do. Mm -hmm. That's how I feel. Mm -hmm. so I'm not afraid. That, that, that's a beautiful thing. You know, we've been working here at uh, Streaming University and WEBT, been working with, with Diana for a number of years, uh, putting technology in the hands of folks in the community so that we can communicate with each other and tell our own stories. And that, that that's what this broadcast is about, so that we can share with our community and others, uh, you know, what's going on, the fact that we are lifting each other up and helping to feed each other and take care of each other. We think that's so important to take control of our own stories. And, and so I, I really appreciate, appreciate you coming on and telling your story and what you got going on, what you're doing for, with, with the community. I appreciate you letting me do that, my brother. And like I said, all you got to do is the people in the community to know me, Brother Bullwhip. That's all you got to say, Brother Bullwhip. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully this will not be the last time that, that you're on, on, on the air streaming with us. We're trying to do a report like this at least once a week with Ms. Blackwell so the folks can uh, you know, be apprised of what's going on in Central Harlem on a regular basis gave me the marching order she said you won't <laughs> <laughs> okay she gave me the marching excellent. order she won't <laughs> excellent 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 thank you my brother thank you thank you and thank you for the work that you're doing appreciate thank you. it you're welcome yes. you welcome yes, sir. All right, then. Thank you. So this is part of the work that we're doing. Um, I was, I think I had told you that we are getting new food sources. Mm -hmm. And uh, one thing, and I have to give her a shout out, Assemblywoman Inez Dickens will be bringing us um, foods for our Fred Samuel uh, community. Mm -hmm. I'm not able to make it today, but it'll be okay because um, we have a lot right now, mm -hmm. but still getting food. Uh, the community is still, you know, people are still reaching out to the community and they're reaching out to NYCHA, which is still wonderful because the numbers for the COVID cases still increase here at NYCHA. So we are mm -hmm. very grateful when we can have food that we can actually take to our residents. They don't have to come out. And yeah. as beautiful as it is, everybody wants to come out, but that uh, virus is still out in the uh, community. It absolutely is. And even though, you know, we're hearing reports that the number of hospitalizations and deaths are going down citywide, it's still it's nowhere near zero. And from, and from what I'm reading in, in, in the reports, it seems like public housing is really the epicenter within the city. Public housing is where all the hotspots are. And that's my big concern. That is still the number one uh, it is the Epic Center right here, right in public housing, where they're finding more and more cases of it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, we don't know how long we'll be in the state. And you had said something, but I want you to be aware that it was the news was a little disheartening, even though the numbers overall has gone down for admittance into the hospital. Mm -hmm. It went up a little bit in the last oh, two days, okay. just a little bit, but I don't know that. Mm -hmm. go up. It, at any time, it's not good. That's right. That's right. We, on the last two weekends, where the weather was real nice and everybody felt they can come out and social gather, uh, it's not. We're still not ready for. It. Yeah, you know, I'm 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 very concerned about that. As you know, Memorial Day weekend and the start of the summer, and I, I just heard that the governor is opening the beaches. I'm I'm really concerned that folks are going to go a little buck wild out there right? and now they can get outside and the weather's good and we're going to have a research in this thing I'm, I'm hoping folks will be careful i actually went outside on sunday which i really won't do that one again for a while <laughs> not the way i did mm. and I got a bad sunburn but you should have seen all the people out there uh it was amazing mm -hmm. it was amazing and it felt like a regular a normal day and we took a walk and we ran into a lot of people. A lot of them did not have their mask on. A lot of them were just doing their normal thing. And it was just, you know, uh, it, it looked like it was just open season for the virus. Wow. Yeah, so, you mm -hmm. know, we we'll have a place to go. You know, uh, they haven't found a cure. They have not 
tested what they have. And so we're still in the same situation. It just seems to have gone a little bit quiet. It's not dormant. It's just quiet. Mm-hmm. And I don't have, we, you know, it's common sense and I don't have to be a scientist, but if we don't have a cure for it by the fall, then what's going to happen is this: we're going to be hit, be hit with two viruses. And if NYCHA is really holding numbers like we're holding, we're going to be in trouble in the fall. So I really would like everybody to pay attention, stay inside, and let's mm. just make this out. Mm. Now, uh, I know you're predominantly focused on food, but how about your PPE, your masks, and your and your and your uh, wipes, and your disinfectant? How's your supply with your community? Well, the mask we're getting from certain areas, such as uh, the NYPD, is providing some. Uh, Gail Brewer has been generous to provide some, but we are in need of them constantly because. We are not just serving those that are in public housing that come by. We are actually serving the general population because again, we're right across the street from the park and guess what? The park is now closed.